Well, on this program last night, we showed you a 2016 email written the day after the presidential election in which a senior Google employee admitted to using Google's resources to get out the vote among certain groups for the express purpose of helping Hillary Clinton win the election. Today, Republican lawmakers responded to the news. The House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy tweeted this, quote, Google claims to be fair but gave a, quote, silent donation to a left-wing group to stop Trump. It's time for Google to answer some questions. An invite will be on its way. Steve Hilton hosts The Next Revolution here on Fox. He's the author of the new book, Positive Populism, Revolutionary Ideas to Rebuild Economic Security, Family, and Community in America. He joins us tonight. Steve, Google's behavior, Google's existence, Google's power raises real questions about whether you can have an actual democracy in the same country as Google. Do you think we can? Not in its present form. I think that's exactly right, and you're so right to focus on it. And what's interesting to me about this story is Google wouldn't even consider this to be a political intervention because to them, the idea of a Trump presidency is so unthinkable and unacceptable that working to block it is just to regulate, it's like breathing to them. And so I don't even think they would stop to think that this is inappropriate. But the bigger point, the underlying point, is the, is the dominance, the dominance that Google has, the way that they dominate so much, as you've been describing um, for, for, for a long time now, so much of the conversation. And there's two steps, therefore, that we need to take. First of all, we need to actually require Google to reverse the power grabs it's already made. It's actually built itself up by acquisition. It needs to sell YouTube, sell Android, all these, are, all these bits of its empire that it's acquired. But we need to go a lot further than that. It's one of the things I talk about in my book, a really radical antitrust agenda that I think President Trump can take forward and, and think about it in, like Teddy Roosevelt did, breaking up these big companies. We wouldn't mind so much about these accusations of bias and so on if there were a hundred search engines that people could choose between. But it's not like that. So that is the, that's the crux of it right there. So you're hearing Google, or you have for the past 10 years, Google, Facebook, and a number of other of these companies defended on pro-market grounds. It's the, at least the government's not censoring us, as if there's really a difference. But a monopoly changes the calculation completely, doesn't it? Yes, this isn't the market at work. No, and that's why, conser I mean, I've been making this argument um, in talking about my book a lot, and conservatives push back and say, oh, we don't like the government regulating business. Of course we don't, but, but antitrust action to force competition into a market, that is the antidote to regulation. That is why, that's the exact way we avoid having to intervene in the exact behavior of individual companies. You've got to have, you've got to have competition. So this is a pro-market argument. It's not just Google, it's Facebook as well, the way it's bought Instagram and, and WhatsApp and so on. Amazon too, it's cloud services and the way it's getting into making its own products and selling them and prioritizing that on its own website. All these ways in which these companies are getting more and more dominant, we've got to stop it. And that is a conservative argument, a pro-market argument. Of course. This is not the capitalism I signed up for. It's not capitalism. This is the Chinese model transplanted right. to the United States. So quickly, we need to trust the algorithm. We need to trust that Google's search results are not being designed to favor one candidate or party over another. We have to because they control all human information. How do we trust them? Well, one thing that I think would be very helpful would be to have transparency. And so some people have called for um, algorithms that are used by these companies and others that, that we haven't discussed to be made public. Not all the details. There's commercial secrets in there, but to be supervised, right. to have a board. There, there's the, of, of independent um, algor algorithm um, scrutineers, if you like, that can try and give the public some sense of reassurance. So you've got to see that as a first step when you don't have any competition. But I think really in the long run, it's competition that's the real answer. Of course it is. And, and Congress waking up from its stupor, finally, I hope. Steve Hilton, thank you very much. Congrats on the book. Great to see Thanks. you. Thanks. I'll see you soon.